The spirit of the holiday season, which is say the spirit of the retail holiday season, will be pretty much the same. It's, it's going to be, you know, doorbuster sales. Let's just get all that stuff out there. Let's hope that it salvages the year for us. Uh, so, yeah, we're not seeing a big substantial changes. Now, it's too early, and maybe I'm wrong, and maybe we'll see uh, some, some companies kind of going against the traditional grain of, of, uh, of holiday marketing. But the early indications are that we're, we're right back to where we were. Welcome to the Ripple Effect the podcast that takes you on a journey through the minds of Wharton faculty. I'm your host, Dan Loney, and in each episode, we'll be diving deep into the inspiration behind the groundbreaking research that Wharton professors have conducted and exploring how their findings resonate with the world today. Well, the relationship between the consumer and retailer is one that's constantly evolving. And when you think about it, especially at this time at the end of the year, the component of holiday sales brings forward other expectations as well. Pleasure to be joined by Peter Fader, professor of marketing here at the Wharton School and author of The Customer Centricity Playbook and also co-founder of Theta. It's been a while. Great to see you. Dan Loney, it's always great to be in the studio with you and talking about consumers and retail and all that. So, I mean, you talk so much about customer centricity and the interesting thing is it feels like more and more companies have bought into it and they understand the importance of it, that relationship between them and the consumer. Are we at a point right now where we've achieved almost total buy-in in in that relationship right now? No, we're not even close. (laughs) Um, We have a conceptual understanding, that's good, that the real unit of the analysis should be the customer and not necessarily the product. People kind of are on board with that, but executing it, building an organization around it, being held accountable by it, Nah, this is still a ways to go. Now, we've made great progress over the you know 10 or so years, uh, and I think it's even accelerating, but there, there's still a, a lot to be done. So then when you think about retail in general and this holiday season, how does the element of customer centricity play in, like in terms of the level of importance? Because companies realize how important this three month well it's a three month window in our history but it's been lengthened out by so many retailers in the last few years and you've hit the nail on the head that you know i talked to all these companies and they want to talk about customer centricity and lifetime value and customer retention and all that sort of thing uh and then the conversations stop right around now i mean literally this morning talking to a big retailer and they're talking about some kind of lifetime value initiative and they said we got to put that on hold it's the holidays And I'm saying, well, wait a minute. This is the time to really be doubling down on it. This is the time that you really want to figure out who your best customers are and leverage that and and let that drive your strategy. And no, 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 this is the holidays. we got to focus on just selling a lot of stuff regardless of who's buying it. So it's it's that kind of frustration. It's this kind of conversation that proves that there's still a lot of work to be done. Well, is it just because they feel like they are so busy, so stressed because – so many companies really believe that this is the time that will make or break them in terms of the course of the the numbers for the for the, either the fiscal year or the calendar year. One hundred percent. They got to just push a lot of stuff out there. They got to do it quickly. They got to do it cheaply. Uh, and they really are taking their eyes off the ball in terms of both who's doing that buying and what are the longer term implications of of the way that they're they're building or even ignoring uh, different kinds of relationships. What do you think is the impact then by not having that focus? Well, we've seen it. Uh, And you mentioned my newest book is the customer base audit. And in that book, we say, what's the difference between the customers acquired during Q4 versus customers acquired through the rest of the year? You get this great big bump. There's a lot of them. That's great. In fact, they buy a lot of stuff during Q4. They look terrific. But then you watch them over the longer term. They're not as good. They don't buy as often through the year. Yeah, they'll come back and buy again a year from now, but only when stuff's on sale. Um, so you're acquiring a, a, a less valuable group of customers during these times, and you're paying a lot of money to do it. Now, I'm not saying that, that holiday marketing is a bad thing. Right. You do have to push a lot of stuff out the door, but you should be doing it mindful of who are these customers buying and how can we tip it a little bit more towards the kinds of customers who will bring us lasting value. Uh, th- that That's a, a bridge too far for a lot of retailers. How do you think then the, the pandemic – factors into this mindset around the relationship between the customer and and, and the retailer, because obviously it was a dynamic that we'd never really gone through before. It changed, obviously, in the scope of what we could and couldn't do, how retailers reacted with that relationship. 
and, and it made me wonder whether or not there were elements that changed or were tweaked during that time that companies have kind of run with and they understand how much value there is looking back at it as you move a, move ahead. Uh, I, I was thinking the same thing during the pandemic because we really saw huge changes to holiday buying. We kind of saw basically the disappearance of, of Black Friday and, and all that for, for a while there. And I went on record wrongly. Uh, saying that this is going to change forever. This is going to be the wake-up call that a lot of companies needed to realize that this isn't so good and we should really be trying to smooth things out. And again, to the extent that we're, we're doing some some heavy-duty activity uh, during the holiday season, we should be doing it with our best customers in mind. Well, that appears to have all gone out the window uh, and all indications are we're right back to where we were in de- December or fall of, of 2019 where it's just let's push stuff out. Um, we'll, we'll deal with the which customers which uh, when, when January comes around. I don't think we've made any progress. So a couple of other things that I wanted to throw in in terms of that relationship is, one, from an economic perspective, where we are right now with the level of inflation. And, and does that factor in to it as well? It should factor in. Certainly it is factoring in just to, to the way the, the retailers are, are staging their plans. It's going to be inflation. It's just going to be other kinds of economic uncertainties. So that we're just going to see some some tactical differences. But but the spirit of the holiday season, which is say the spirit of the retail holiday season, will be pretty much the same. It's, it's going to be, you know, door buster sales. Let's just get all that stuff out there. Let's hope that it salvages the year for us. Uh, so, yeah, we're not seeing a big substantial changes. Now, it's too early, and maybe I'm wrong, and maybe we'll see uh, some some companies kind of going against the traditional grain of, of, uh, of holiday marketing. But the early indications are that we're, we're right back to where we were. Then there's the technology side, and we've obviously added so many elements of technology to our daily lives. And obviously, retail with e-commerce uh, has played a big role with that. But now we're in this mode of everything's got to be AI and factoring in AI in, in so many aspects of our business. I think, well, I'll ask it this way. Are, are we still in a time where we're learning where that's, that place is going to be in terms of retail? Totally. And that's very exciting. Uh, so what we're seeing right now, or at least my prediction for what we'll see through the holiday season, is using AI to do the things that we were going to do anyway, but to do them a little bit more effectively, a little bit more efficiently. So whether it's it's using AI to uh, maybe to design the kinds of products that we're going to be selling, to fine tune the messaging, to do a little bit of uh, to to kind of help improve some of the, the supply chain aspects. So we won't really see it big time. It's just gonna it's gonna be woven into the things that we do, and maybe that's all it should be. But I think we might see more substantial changes in the years ahead. Uh, as, as not just retailers, but as, as all managers, just just find uh, more uh, uh, more dramatic uh, ways to deploy it uh, to do things that we just wouldn't have been capable of doing before. So maybe a little bit more of a subtle impact as we move forward. And I, I ask it that way because I think the, the the theory or the theme that's out there is that there will be impacts in different ways, other than just on the bottom line of, of a company's. Uh, uh, profit sheet. That's right. So we'll see some some slight different operational changes. Now we're going to go back to the point that I've been uh, harping on, which is it's the holiday season, and even though that AI stuff might be our future, you know we have the playbook here for the holidays, and so we're going to follow it. Now, to the extent that we can use AI in the playbook, we'll see that. Uh, but we're not going to see anything really, really bold with it until we rewrite the playbook, which is something that sorely needs to be done. You've talked in the past with me about that that relationship between customer and retailer and when something goes wrong. Does that dynamic change at all or is it enhanced even more to the downside during this holiday retail system uh, season because – all of these companies are so worried about getting this stuff out and, and getting it into the hands of people. Sure. There's a, a couple of uh, factors going on. and one, one would be the economic uncertainty, and we really have to protect ourselves from the downside. And the other would be just a, a lot of the backlash that retailers have been seeing, uh, whether it's you know, related to you know, different kinds of so-called woke activities and, and so on. Uh, I think uh, a lot of retailers are just kind of more worried about saying something, doing something that could just open up some kind of trap door. So they're going to play it 
a little bit safer uh, in, in, in these terms, and understandably so. Uh, and I, I kind of wish that we, we'd see bolder moves as far as uh, what retailers were proposing to do and, and how they did it. But but right now, it's, it's play it safe time. So what you're talking about, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like that's part of what seems to be a greater focus on companies' brand right now, that they are so concerned of making sure that that brand is as pristine as it can be so they, they don't have any negative impacts. That's right. It's, it's the brand itself, but it, it but it, it's even uh, just even kind of specific messaging. Uh, and and it, yeah, companies are, are they, they don't want to take chances right now. They want to be very, very careful about how they, how they choose their words. You know, we, we, we'd sometimes see some kind of uh, edgy uh, Christmas advertising or even uh, uh, different kinds of promotional campaigns. Uh, and we're just not going to see a lot of them now because we're just worried that someone might take that the wrong way. But it, it almost makes you wonder what, if maybe the time of the year and kind of the history of the time of the year, people are kind of geared into what they believe it's going to be. And it, it's a more relaxed and toned down time of the year in comparison to any other time of the year that maybe it all it, it just kind of moves right into uh you know, potentially not making some of these moves, right? And 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 it should be the, the case that that let's fall back on kind of uh, traditional values and traditional thinking, and and so that that that's great. But every now and again, you, you'll see a firm wanting to kind of break out of the pack and and do something to get people to say, "Whoa!" You know, just to kind of get their attention. Uh, and and it's nice to see that, but I don't think we're going to see much of it right now for for all the kind of obvious reasons. There are a few other th- things I want to bring up. One being how companies think about returns these days, uh, and certainly that's been a focus, especially in the last year or two. Um, and it's always a, a focus at this time of the year because people will buy something for a loved one and it may not fit or it's the wrong color, whatever it might be. But companies really are focusing more and more on trying to lower the level of returns. Because that's a cost impact to them. That's a big problem because it, it, it has been a, a Christmas issue uh, because, you know, I don't want this. I'm going to return it. I'll get something else. But now we you see it's a 365-day-a-year issue where, uh, you know, I'm going to buy a pair of shoes. Well, I'm going to buy eight pairs of shoes to make sure I have the right color and size. Uh, that's become much more rule than exception these days. It, uh, companies are really, really struggling with it. So, you know, in a way, the, the good news is that, that, that com- there's no good news, but the, the silver lining is that companies are kind of used to dealing with that now. And, and uh, during the holidays, it might happen at a slightly greater volume. Everything happens at a greater volume. But I, I don't think that that problem will be particularly acute during during the holiday season as much as it is uh, every day of the year. But there's we, we need a solution for it. We need to come up with a way to create just better incentives, both for companies to put the right stuff out there, the right messaging, the right sizing, uh, and, and for people to not abuse the system as much as they do now. Okay, so the abuse part is obviously an important component because there are a couple of retailers out there. I can think of one specifically. I won't give the name, but they've kind of made their brand – or part of their brand, because they accepted returns all the time. It didn't cost you to send them back. And and it was something that connected them with the consumer. But obviously, that mindset is changing right now. Takes us right back to customer centricity. I think we have to make tough decisions for which customers are we willing to have that kind of very generous return policy, and for which customers it's going to be basically take it or leave it or you know, pay, say, a 10% restocking fee. Uh, the companies have to get smarter. They have to get bolder. They have to be just more responsible around these kinds of behaviors. These are conversations that are just now starting, and, and we're seeing every now and again uh, a, a little experiment that a company might be running, but we're not seeing any um, a broad application of, of this kind of you know r- returns-oriented discipline. I think we are going to start seeing that. We're going to start seeing it soon. But we're not going to see it during the holiday season. <laughs> <laughs> What's been your reaction to all of the conversation in, in recent months around, quote unquote, shrink uh, of the concern of the th- level of theft and loss that seemingly retailers have dealt with for decades, but now is getting more and more publicity, whether it be to the level that's going on right now or just kind of the news cycle that we seemingly are. Oh, in it's now. real. It's real. There's no no question. It's it's getting a lot of publicity. But a, I think it's appropriate that it get publicity. Yes, it's a real problem. But b, the the nature of shrink. It's no longer just you know a, a kid does uh, taking a comic book. Uh, it's it's organized crime. Uh, it, it's 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 a real problem. I mean, to the point where so many stores are, are closing down. Uh, it's it it has to be dealt with. What's going to be interesting is is to see if if it gets a 
worse or if it gets mitigated during the holiday season. You know, it might be that there's just so much, uh, so many extra employees in the stores, so much traffic in the stores. It's just uh, harder to see that kind of thing going on. On the other hand, that might provide cover for some of that nefarious activity to take place. Hard to tell, but it, it's a, a problem maybe even bigger than the returns problem uh, where we're not at an equilibrium with it. It's just a, a, a real, real issue. Uh, and we better be in a, in, a, in a better place with it a year from now. Otherwise, it, it could really drag down the whole retail sector. Then you also have a lot of retailers that have to think about uh, some of the issues that we're seeing play out in, in cities across the U.S. where uh, theft in their stores is, is at a higher level. And as a reaction, companies are shutting stores down in some locations because the potential impact and threat to their employees has grown in, in recent months. And then when we start interacting that with the holidays, when we have fewer outlets, less convenience for yeah. people, it's gonna, you're going to have even you know bigger crowds at the big mall stores. Uh, so you don't think about some of those, those consequences. Uh, again, it's hard to blame the retailers for taking some of those drastic actions, which is why we really need to have come up with, with different kinds of, of, of policies, laws, uh, just, just ways of, of displaying and distributing merchandise in stores uh, that, that's going to attack this problem because it, it cannot keep going on as it is. So what do you think are the themes then for retail during this holiday season coming up? Well, again, there's the theme, there's the prediction of what's going to happen, and there's the kind of what I, I wish would happen. Uh, the main theme is let's just sell a lot of stuff. <laughs> let's, let's let's get those big boxes out of here. Let's uh, let's turn from from red to black. I mean, it's it's the usual kind of narrative. I think that that will be the the overwhelming theme. Okay, maybe there's something good about it. Maybe if, if companies are, are missing the opportunity to be more customer-centric, missing the opportunity to, to use their data, to make better decisions that will lead to, to better long-run outcomes. On the other hand, uh, there, there's something about just uh, maybe, indeed, putting all that aside. Let's just, you know, have Christmas in a traditional way. Let's enjoy the holiday season. Uh, and then we'll kind of, you know, get back to work on, on January 1st and, and then hopefully make uh, 2024 not only a better year, but a smarter year um, as we use data, as we understand our customers and run our businesses more effectively. Peter, always great to talk with you and get your insight. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dan. You got it. Peter Fader, marketing professor here at the Wharton School. Thank you for listening to The Ripple Effect. We hope you found this episode informative and engaging. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review so that we can continue to bring you the best insight from the Wharton School.